Okay, and welcome to the safety training video for the DeWalt DCN 890 concrete nailer. In the box, the kit comprises of the tool itself. We have two 18 volt XR batteries. We have two nose pieces, one already on the tool and a separate nose piece for a different application which we'll cover later on. And of course, finally, we have the battery charger. Now, although we're not gonna be able to cover all the applications the concrete nailer is available to do, we do recommend that all operators familiarize themselves with the instruction manual prior to use. Okay, before we continue to look at how the tool works, it's worthwhile noting that this tool is unique in the fact that it only uses the DeWalt 18 volt battery for its power source. Previous models may have used gas or powder, and it's worthwhile to note that the DeWalt XR battery is compatible with all DeWalt XR tools. Okay, so I can show you the principle of operation of the 18 volt tool. What I'm gonna do is not fit a battery at this stage. I'm just gonna actually walk you through the process. So once the tool is depressed against the work surface, the brushless motor spins up the flywheel to speed. And as soon as I pull the trigger, the driver blade is fired forward, pushing the nail into the base material, at which point then a solenoid will come into play, which returns the driver blade using a ratchet system. Okay, as this tool is unique from other direct fastening tools, there's a few other features on this tool that I'd like to run through with you now. Okay, as with all direct fastening tools, the tool compromises a dead trigger safety system. What that means is I can't pull the trigger and fire a nail across the room. What it means is I do need to apply contact pressure to the nose tip before I can pull the trigger, only then will it fire a nail into the base material. This process is known as sequential action. Okay, the tool can actually be operated in two different modes. The switch here, the tool is in sequential mode and by moving the switch up, puts the tool into rapid cycle mode. Okay, I'm now gonna demonstrate the different modes of how the tool operates. To be able to do that, I'm gonna to need to put the battery in the tool. What I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna fire a nail, I'm not gonna pull a trigger, there are no nails currently in the tool, but to make the motor spin, I do need to insert the battery. So, inserting the battery. Okay, so turning the tool around, line up with the base material. Now, if I push the tool down against the work surface now, the motor's gonna spin up to speed. What you'll notice is when I release the tool from the work surface, the motor will slow down and wind down. Now that's in sequential mode, which is ideal for single shots. For repetitive fixings, simply switch to rapid cycle mode. And what you'll notice now is when I push the tool down against the work surface and release, the motor now continues to run at full speed. Okay, another great feature of the DCN 890 is the fact we're able to regulate the power the tool gives. If you see on the side here, there is a switch, positions one, two, and three. In position one, according to the icon, that's for block work. Position two is for concrete, position three is for steel. Ultimately, lowest power is one, highest power is three, and we can adjust those manually depending on the base material we're gonna be firing into. Okay, before we go ahead and now do a practical demonstration of the DeWalt DCN890, let's talk about some safety. Eye protection is a must. Hearing protection, you must wear as well. Gloves, we recommend, but obviously the main thing to do is to check your local sight rules first, alongside your hard hat and vest, as there may be other implications a sight may enforce. Okay, on the DCN890, most of the safety implications are represented by icons on the side of the magazine. For more information about what these icons refer to, please consult the instruction manual. Okay, to keep safe, obviously make sure things like your work area are clean and tidy, no trip hazards. Electrical safety, make sure the electrical equipment is in good working order, no bare wires, don't expose them to wet conditions, etc. But more importantly, your personal safety items to bear in mind are. Stay alert, watch what you are doing and use common sense when operating a power tool. Do not use a power tool when you are tired or under the influence of drugs, alcohol or medication. Okay, some key things to remember then. So when you're working at height, make sure that you use a good stable platform. Do not overreach like so. It's a good thing to remember with a tool that actually when you've got both hands on the tool, you keep it in a good working area around you. But one key thing to remember is not to have your face behind the tool when you're firing due to any possible recoil. Be careful not to fire fasteners too close to the edge of the base material. This could cause breakout or fracture of the base material. Take care not to fire a fastener on top of another fastener. The distance and spacing can be outlined in the technical documents for the nails. 
Always check your surroundings to make sure there is nobody working on the other side of the wall that you will be fixing to. Never place your hand over the nose of the tool. Always ensure to hold the tool vertically and never at an angle. Do not fire nails into materials which have been welded or worked with a welding torch. Do not use the tool with an empty magazine or barrel. Do not use the tool in the rain or a very humid environment. Do not expose a tool to high temperatures, for example, direct sunlight. Okay, it's important to remember not to lubricate the tool. Okay, now we're gonna look at the components that make up the tool and all the accessories that go with it for the various applications. First of all, we're gonna look at the primary source of the power for the tool, which is the battery. So first of all, ensure the battery isn't damaged or cracked. Check the battery on the battery indicators to ensure that it's fully charged. If it's not fully charged, make sure that you only use the DeWalt charger for charging the battery. Okay, so being the battery is the main source of power for the tool, it's important to remember that the tool is not live until the battery is fitted. We always say for safety, make sure that the battery is the last thing you fit before using the tool, and it's the first thing you take out once you finish using the tool. If you suspect the battery is faulty in any way, please make sure that you dispose of the battery responsibly. One more thing to remember is, if the tool is left unattended, please do not leave the battery fitted to the tool. Okay, one other feature of the tool is that we're able to change the nose pieces for different applications. This is the main nose piece that comes with the tool and is suitable for fixing drywall track. To remove the nose piece, we simply push down this lever and pull out the nose piece. Okay, when you put the nose piece back in the tool, ensure that the line lines up with here and simply replace the tool and release the lever. Okay, the second nose piece that comes supplied with the tool and for fixing a wide range of DeWalt fixing accessories, and I'll show you how those work now. Okay, one of the applications for the tool is for fixing cable management. So here's an example of a cable bow. So what happens here is that the actual nose piece fits inside the cable bow, and then when the tool is fired, the nail fires through the cable bow and fixes it to the base material. Okay, some other accessories for the tool incorporate a small plastic washer. Now this washer helps to fit inside the nose piece like so, so that when I remove my fingers, the nose piece stays in place with the washer and then the fastener fires through, fixing it to the base material. Okay, so there's one final nose piece that's available for the tool, and this is the magnetic nose piece. This nose piece could be used, for example, if you had any other metal accessories that you wish to fix to the base material that doesn't have the plastic collar. So for example, if you had a P-clip with no collar, then what you would do is simply fix on the end of the tool and fire the nail. Okay, so next we're gonna look at the nail range for the tool. So the nails start at 30 millimeters and range all the way up to 57 millimeters. You'll see on this nail strip, it's a yellow collation and this denotes that it's a standard type of nail. This is okay for standard concretes, light masonries, etc. If the concrete's particularly hard or you're fixing to steel work, you might want to use the extra hard nail, XH, which come in a red collated strip. Now sometimes also you need an extra high shear capacity for the nail, you need a thicker nail, and we do a nail called an HD nail, which is 3.7 mil diameter. So remember, when choosing the correct length of nail, you need to add the embedment depth plus the fixture thickness. The tool can be used for attaching various fixtures, such as steel brackets, wooden battens, membranes and wire mesh, as well as wooden sheet or thin sheet materials. Okay, so now we've looked at all the safety elements regarding using the tool, and we've looked at all the components and accessories, let's get on and use the tool. Okay, so we're on site, got my PPE, hat, glasses, got my ear defenders, uh, and the application we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be fixing some of these double P clips to this concrete. So we take out the tool. First thing we wanna do is we wanna check the nose piece. It's not the correct nose piece for the job. So before we do any maintenance to the tool, we first of all check that there's no battery fitted and that the tool is in the lock position. We're then ready to change the nose piece. So with the lever, we push down, take the nose piece out and insert the new nose piece
Okay, so now we're happy with that. The next thing to do is load the nails and load the tool for operation. So, we're firing to concrete, so we want some 20 mil nails because we want to embed the nail 20 mil into the concrete. To load the nails, we pull the slider open until it locks in position. We then take the nails, you notice the nails on an angle, they will only fit one way. You can't fit these wrong. So when you get them correct, they will slide down the magazine channel to the end and then hold the slider until it grabs the nails. Do not let the slider go, hold the slider at all times. So the next thing we need to do now is to load the battery. So we take our battery, place it into the tool, firmly click into position and the tool is now ready to go. Okay, as mentioned previously, the two modes of the tool, normal and rapid mode, are available. Because we're only fixing some pipe clips and we're going to be working fairly slowly, we're going to leave it in the normal position for this exercise. On the power adjustment, we said before that number two is for concrete, so we're going to position the power now to number two. Now we're good to go. Okay, so with our double pipe clip, we simply push onto the end of the tool and the tool is good to go. Next thing we need to do is just activate the tool by pushing the on switch. With all that there, we're good to go. Lower the tool to the work surface. Have a good check around, make sure there's no one around. Warn anybody nearby. Push the nose of the tool down. Okay, so that was just an example of firing some pipe clips using the normal function. What we'll do this time is we'll bump the tool up to rapid fire and we'll show you some dry line installation. Okay, so popping the battery back into the tool, making sure the tool is in the un unlocked position. We'll now put the tool to rapid fire mode and we're good to go. Okay, so everything there works successfully. We fired the track, we fired the pipe clips. In the unlikely event that the tool has a nail jam, what we need to do is try and clear that nail jam. So the first thing we do is we lock the tool and remove the battery. This makes the tool safe. I then open the magazine slider to its open position and I shake out any nails that are inside the tool. To check inside, I remove the lever, take off the magazine, and have a look inside. And I just check there's no debris or nails. If there are, I remove them. To replace the magazine, simply hook into position, close the magazine, and replace the lever. The tool is now ready to go and ready for more nails to be inserted. So the two front headlights on the tool, what they do is illuminate the work surface, but they also tell you if there's a problem with the tool. For example, the light flashing here shows that the icon above it the battery is shown that the battery is low. You need to recharge the battery using the correct charger and replace. On the other side of the tool, there's another light. This light shows the driver blade has stalled mid-travel and to reset the driver blade, all you need to do is pull the lever to one side and release and that resets the driver blade. Just for the electrics point of view, you then need to lock and unlock the tool to be able to continue working. Okay, so in a situation where we're fixing two high ceilings, we can make life slightly easier with a DeWalt pole tool. Quite simply, the DCN890, we unscrew this lever here. The strap comes undone. So, pop in the 890 into the machine. Rescrew the collar. Okay, for this job, we're going to be fixing a cable bow to a hard to reach area. Okay, so we finished using the tool for the day. You can see I've already removed the battery from the workstation. All I need to do now is just remove the nails. So pop the slider down, take out the nails, pop them back in their box. Just before I put the tool in the box, what I'll do is I'll have a quick, good look around the tool. I'll check the magazine for damage, check the foot's secure, make sure all the connections are okay, have a good look around the tool. 
I see no damage here, but if I was to see any damage, I'd report or rectify that damage. Thanks for watching the training video today. For more information, contact www.dewalt.co.uk or call our technical helpline.